Hey everybody, welcome to Zenny 62. It's um, 6.07 Pacific Standard Time, 9.07 in the East. It is my pleasure to welcome uh, my friend, uh, actually for a while now, Oakland District 1 Council Member Dan Kalb. Uh, and Hi. first, and Dan, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. A lot of stuff going on, as you might expect, both locally and around the country. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. Your thoughts on uh, the protests regarding the uh, death of George Floyd and uh, Black Lives Matter? And, and not just George Floyd. I mean, that's just one of, of hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands probably across the, the country over a period of years and decades. And uh, you know, every once in a while, one particular incident, in this case, George Floyd, you know, brings out the, 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 uh, the, the the, the anger, the passion, the, the demand for action, for change, uh, and the, the enough is enough. The enough is enough was decades ago. Uh, I, I think I remember, uh, and people who um, you and I and, and many others may remember, uh, certainly certainly remember uh, the Rodney King beating, and that was a, that was a landmark event because that's when it went to went from prior to that, pretty much mostly people who were in the African-American community or people of color or activists were aware of the horrendous decades of um, instances of killing of unarmed black men or others who, who don't deserve to be harmed, let alone killed, and, and, or, beat, or beaten in that case. Uh, and then when that video came out, the, the white, white world woke up, finally. Um, and while we still have a long way to go, um, the, the, the sense that the incredulousness that, that people had at, at that point. Um, it wasn't enough, but it was it was an awakening for many people, uh, long overdue. And so we saw reforms that came from that, both in Los Angeles, where that took place, and other cities around the country. Um, and that, that made, I would say that was some incremental progress, both in LA, Oakland, all across the, much of the country, let's say, um, but not enough, not nearly enough. Uh, and then we've seen other instances of beatings uh, unfair treatment and killings of mostly unarmed black men, uh, sometimes women. Uh, and, and so um, people are feeling rightfully so this sense of, and, and what I'm saying is probably a gross understatement, but a sense of frustration, a, 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 in, like uh, anger that this is still happening um, and that we are allowing directly or indirectly explicitly or implicitly allowing uh, our, our police officers around the country, and not all officers, of course, but many of them, or some of them at least, to, to, to engage in this with little or no consequence. Um, and that's been the history. Uh, for And so people are saying, okay, what, what do we have to do to just stop this? This is enough is enough, we must stop this. And I, as you know, I've been engaged in police reform efforts here in Oakland uh, for several years now since I've been a council member. And I wrote the ballot measure to create a civilian police commission that had some real authority here in Oakland. And we just finished writing a, um, a modification to that that we hope will go on the ballot uh, this, um, this fall to, to improve that. Uh, so um, we're, we're working to, you know, deal, I'm trying to get this uh, sure. light here. Um, we're working to, okay, sorry. We're working to you know, do the best we can to um, institute policies and mechanisms and procedures that will not let somebody off the hook if there is serious misconduct. Uh, and other jurisdictions need to, need to do the same. Um, and we're hoping at a minimum, at a minimum, that the reaction that, that uh, is coming from um, the public, a broad cross section of the public to change the status quo will lead to, at a minimum, significant reforms across the country in every local jurisdiction, certainly every medium and large city in the country. Uh, and you, you, see, you see bills being put forward in Congress that you would never think would be able to see the light of day actually being taken seriously now. You see efforts, you, you, see, you see police unions, police officer unions, in uh, not all of them, but some of them, um, in California, and I think other states, hopefully, that are saying yes, we need to take action. We are incensed at this. We need to take action. Now, I don't know if the, what the police unions are saying are saying is enough, but at least it's a few steps in the right direction, which prior to this would be like a non-starter. Uh, and so we're seeing an opportunity for serious change. 
And I've already put forward um, a resolution that's, that will ban the use of uh, carotid restraints and chokeholds in Oakland. Others are, are looking to support that as well. I think I think the police chief even supports that now, our new chief. Um, we're going we're gonna to do what we can to ban the hiring of lateral hired police officers who have um, records of serious misconduct. Um, we're going to require warnings in Oakland before uh, shootings, uh, a shooting can occur by a sworn officer. Um, and I have a whole list of requirement um, uh, to intervene, intercede if an officer is engaging in mis serious misconduct, um, and so and, and, a, and a range of other things, and and also the police commission measure that we're putting forward um, that I helped draft with Councilmember Kaplan to to strengthen commissioning and give it some more uh, authority and more importantly more staffing, uh, including an inspector general, which is absolutely critical. Uh, and so we have to take a strong look at every stage of the discipline process and reform what can be reformed, negotiate what needs to be negotiated, look for state state guidance and state legislation when, when possible, and, and improve the situation. And listen, I fully believe that most um, sworn police officers in Oakland and around the country are really good people doing a very difficult job and are not likely to engage in this magnitude of of harm and and and, and bad and bad behavior and, and you know murderous behavior and killing. Um, but we, we have to not just say, oh, well, if you don't kill someone, then you're okay. But, well, wait a minute. Yes, don't kill anybody. But if you're doing something seriously wrong, you still have to be held accountable. And so I, I work well with our police captain, with our police chief, with many officers who I've met over the uh, months and years, really, seven and a half years. And, and I will continue to work well with them and make sure that um, our investigations division at uh, OPD is not gutted that we maintain a strong investigations division to make sure serious and violent crimes are fully investigated. I took that upon myself when I first became a council member to improve that, to get more staffing and more resources to investigations, and we have that now. I don't wanna go back. Um, but you're also hearing a calling for not just reform, which is absolutely critical, but for um, reducing the funding for police departments across the country uh, and, and shifting that funding into um, social services, or into and or into alternative methods of responding to um, cries from the public for action. Um, meaning, somebody who calls nine one one, in many cases they need a police officer. In many cases they don't need a police officer. They might need something else. They might need something more than nothing. I, I, I believe that. But maybe that's something they need is not a sworn police officer carrying a gun, and that's what we have to figure out. In fact, there are a few cities in the country that have made some progress and are, are instituting that or have already done that, but Oakland needs to be one of those cities. And so I want to, I fully support the uh, desire to model a program and pilot, a robust pilot of a program to create that alternative source of, of reaction, of helping out the community for those who might call um, what, has, what has been our 911, 911 uh, uh, dispatchers. And so I fully support that. And if we could find money coming from our police budget or anywhere else for that matter to uh, fund that pilot and, and in a robust fashion, I absolutely support that effort. Um, it's not gonna be easy. We're in a difficult um, uh, financial time right now with the COVID crisis causing a, a very serious, maybe what some would say artificially created, but still very serious recession. Uh, and we have to realize that we need to we, um, you know, have a balanced budget, no choice in the matter. And um, we have to fund the things that we have to fund to, to maintain the operations, to, you know, fill potholes and pave streets, um, get more affordable housing built. And I've been a champion of affordable housing, of course, my entire career. Uh, and so we have a lot to do. But one of those things we have to try to do the best we can is to fund uh, the start of a alternative way of helping people who need help. Um, that, that might not need um, a sworn officer with a gun. And listen, I totally understand and agree with and, and accept the fact that some 911 calls must be and should be a sworn police officer who's trained to use a gun and, and other means uh, and other, you know, that's that's what police officers are there for in case they're needed. Hey, can I ask, has anyone talked about changing the police approach to black men? Because for example, out here in Atlanta, we have, uh, Rishon Brooks and uh, the Atlanta police were kind of to give me their um, video and, and body cam and um, it's here on Zenny 62, but it reminded me of something that occurred to me in 2006 
highway patrol officer, I actually flagged down on the bridge because a guy was tailgating me. I don't know why. And was forcing me to go up to 80. And I thought, this doesn't right. So I saw the cop in the middle of the, uh, on the uh, west side of the bridge, in the middle, and I was like trying to flag him down. So I went in front of the ship to get his attention. And I did, but not in what I expected. The person that was tailgating me to my left went zooming by 80. So I'm thinking that they're going to take off after him. They didn't. We come to the exit uh, area. They flip on their lights and I'm thinking, okay. So I go over and I'm explaining, hey, officer, I was being tailgated by this guy. I don't know what's going on. And he says, don't worry, I'm going to get you out of here. And through a series of events, he says, put your hand over your head like this. And he's talking to his partner and he says, well, see, you do it like this and you cuff him like that. And I'm thinking, and I was shocked and I'm like this and tears started rolling down my eyes. Now, now council member, then he says to me, oh, you're going to do that. And he grabs my entire body and he body slams me on the hood of his squad car. And oh, the I'm sorry. And in the middle of the fall, I had an out-of-body experience because I couldn't believe what I was experiencing, yet I had no control, okay? I'd never been through that before or since. Bill Dubois, who you may recognize his name from the Heinz Reeser case, was my friend and attorney. He had the, um, he had the cop come to court twice. He never showed up. And, to, and I, when I get that guy's name, I'm gonna, because I'm a media company, I'm going to just blast the shit out of his name all over the place. Because it's still in me. When I saw Richard go through that, I saw exactly the same thing. Uh, and then something else, I've noticed that every time in these video cams, the cop is dealing with a black man, he's he's ready to arrest him. It's like all the other stuff is yada, yada, yada. It's almost like blah, 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 handcuff you. How can we change a mentality where the officers seem like they're just, and I'll, I'll give you a specific example. When two Alameda police officers rolled up on uh, Molly Watkins, same thing. They were ready to arrest them. They said, we're going to arrest you for dancing in the street, which is a First Amendment right. Yeah. Right? You know, this is, it's. If, if they don't want him to dance in the street, they can just ask him to, okay, we'll go to the sidewalk, just to, to yeah. but not make a big deal about it. But yeah. this mentality among some officers is to like, well, yeah. make yeah. it out. Of I mean, is anyone talking about that? Because it's. I can I see this video after video after video nationwide, and it 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 that behavior in and of itself should be criminal. I'm thinking, and I have to say this: Are these guys white supremacists? Where they just feel like they have to like show these black guys who's boss and just lock I, them up? I I don't know. I, you know, I, I wish I had a, a good psychological analysis of what leads people to want to become a police officer, and what what the different answers are to those questions. For some officers, it's 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 totally, you know, the, the, the reasons are totally great and you're glad they're, they're stepping up to, to help people the best they can. For others, it may be some leftover, I'm not a psychologist, but something that is like, you know, they're, they're this desire to exert power, to have power, to, to in, impose their power on people who are not them or who don't look like them. And those people should not be on the police force. I, I'll tell you, I have talked to many police chiefs, not just Oakland police chiefs, past and present, but police chiefs from other jurisdictions in California uh, that I've met through the League of Cities and other ways. And to, a, to without exception, every police chief has told me that there are people on their police force who should not be carrying a gun, right? That's what, this is what police chiefs say. Now, not a lot of people, just maybe a few, maybe one, maybe just a few, but nevertheless. Uh, and so what they do is they always reserve a few desk jobs hmm. for th for people, who, who uh, jobs that could be done by civilians, but they reserve them for sworn officers because they want to put those people who should who have serious misconduct, should not be carrying a gun, they put them behind a desk so they're not out in the community to protect hmm. us. Now, the reality is those people should be kicked off the force. If you know this and they have some misconduct on their record, why can't we get rid of them? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and that's part of the problem. We have some challenges, some problems in our discipline process, the multi-step discipline process. I tried to address those back in 2016. I got my hat handed to me. Um, I could not get that provision, or those provisions in, in the measure from 2016. We still got a very good measure, but we couldn't get everything we wanted. Uh, and so this is the reality. Uh, this, Remember, how can we help you so that 
what happened? Well, this is the reality here. You have to, uh, the, you know, the, the art of legislating is the art of compromise. Um, and if you don't have enough votes to pass something, you have to make some adjustments. Now, I, I'll only go so far. I won't totally, completely get rid of something or completely gut it totally. And I would never do that. But if I just have to make a few moderate modifications in order to, to get it passed, but it's still a very strong thing, that's part of the process. You have to know how to do that. And, and I do. I have a lot of experience doing that. I have a lot of experience understanding how to get something done by working the process as thoroughly as possible. And so um, that's just one example of that. So we have a lot of work to do, and I don't claim to be an expert. I look to many experts around the country, locally and throughout the country, who understand it, who are African Americans, people are persons of color, professors, um, people who have been activists, ad advocates in the community, who, who have more firsthand experience than I do. Uh, as a white person, I would not claim to have that have that firsthand experience, uh, but, uh, but but I acknowledge it's there and that we have to do something about it very seriously. Uh, well, I'm with Oakland Council Member Dan Kalb, District One, and Dan, out of your respect for your time, uh, want to pick this up again? Uh, I'm happy to, uh, to to chat with you anytime, Zenny. Um, but any issue we're dealing with a lot, affordable housing, um, yes, yes. our response to the COVID-19 crisis and, and the economics of our responses and our small businesses. Uh, and of course, um, police reform is something that I've been a leader on uh, my entire time here on the council. And I, you have to be able to understand that um, supporting serious reforms of the police department and even supporting the, this alternative for lower level kinds of calls doesn't mean doesn't need to be at odds with having police officers and, and respecting who they are. Uh, and I, I feel that I've respected um, the officers who I've met uh, firsthand, the captains who I've met, the, the deputy chiefs, assistant chiefs and chiefs I've met. I, I respect them. Um, I don't always agree with everything they, they do or wanna do. Um, there have been some officers, including in Oakland, who rightfully um, were, you know, should be should not be on the force and got fired and serious misconduct, but that's the exception. And, and we just have to, create a system where those exceptions are not tolerated ever. Oh. Um, and that and we have to make sure they are off the force and that requires better recruitment, better training, and a, and a better discipline process to not allow those who have serious misconduct should not be carrying a gun and should not be on the force at all. Well, one question, I get a lot of email on this. When can will we have a black police chief again? We haven't had one since 2011. And as you recall a year ago, Oakland's black police officers wrote on Moss about racism they were experiencing. What can we do to improve that situation? Uh, you see, I think uh, uh, Howard Jordan uh, was here through the uh, middle of 2013. That's correct. Uh, during yeah. my first half, first half of my first year. Yeah. Uh, and you're right. Um, we haven't had a police chief. I mean, I, the police chief is selected by um, was selected by the by the city administrator and mayor. Now the commission and the mayor work together to do that, and rightfully so. City councils are not, it's not their job, nor should it be to hire department heads. And so while we could, you know, chat, we really are not allowed to, not allowed to influence that process. We could, we could, we could require better recruitment or have a robust process, do a, a search here and consider, do all these things. But in terms of the, the actual narrowing down, we cannot get involved. Absolutely forbidden. Dan, hey, by the way, welcome aboard. You're a vlogger now. We just got to get the little like Wi-Fi thing straightened out. Okay. Hey, Dan, don't go anywhere and get your backstage, but thank you. Hold on a second, folks. We'll thank you. Back.